This lesson deals with basic circuit analysis in the S domain. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 10, starting on page 13. Let's go back and take a look at an example we did in chapter 8, where we had a series inductor, and then that's connected with a parallel RNC. Suppose that this inductor and this capacitor have zero initial conditions. Could you transform this circuit into the S domain and find Z equivalent of S and V out of S? Then evaluate that result with a 250 millihenry inductor, a 0.5 microfarad capacitor, and a 3K ohm resistor. Assuming that our frequency is 2000 radians per second, in other words, S is equal to J omega would be J2000. If V of S is 100 cosine of 2000 T, could you find V out of T using MATLAB and compare the results with PSPICE? To transform this circuit from the time domain to the S domain, we're just going to do this element by element. So the inductor has an impedance SL and an initial condition of a current source in parallel with it, but with it being zero, it would just be an open circuit. So just SL. The capacitor has a series voltage source with the initial condition, but that too is equal to zero, so we just have the capacitor, so its impedance is 1 over SC, and then a resistor just maps as a resistor and a voltage source as a voltage source. And the results are shown below. And now we can do simple algebra to find the quantities of interest. So to find Z equivalent, let's find the parallel combination of these two elements and then add that in series with SL. Now things in parallel, their admittance is add, so let's take the admittance of these two elements. And that's just going to be SC plus 1 over R, and then the reciprocal of that would be the impedance. And then that's going to be in series with SL. So multiply numerator and denominator here by R, and you get R over SCR plus 1. And then we can find a common denominator of SCR plus 1. Multiply this times SL, so we'll get S squared LCR and then SL times 1, and then just the R. So that's our Z equivalent as a function of S. Now to find the voltage across the load, we can do a voltage divider with our input, voltage divided with this parallel combination, but we already found the value of that right here. So that impedance over that impedance plus SL times the input would be the voltage across our output resistance R. Let's clean this up also. Multiply numerator and denominator by SCR plus 1. So we just have R, R, and then we're going to multiply this times this, so we'll get S squared LCR, and then S times L. You can put this in descending order. So here's the S squared term, S to the 1, S to the 0. And so this is V out of S in terms of our input V of S. Our second task was to evaluate these results with a 250 millihenry inductor, 0.5 microfarad capacitor, and a 3K resistor. So let's scroll back in the last page here and see if we can show that result. So here's LCR, so here's our L, C, and R. And then we have L, which is 250 millihenry, or 0.25, and then a resistor of 3K. And then we have S times CR, which is 0.5 micro times 3K plus 1. That would be the value of our Z equivalent with the values of the components. Clean this up a little bit. Let's multiply this out. You get 375 micro. This is just 0.25 and 3K. And then the product of these two is 1.5 milli. Now evaluating S equals J omega, we would have then J2000. And then for S squared, we would have 2 times 10 to the third squared, where 4 times 10 to the sixth. And then the J squared is a minus 1. Plugging that back in over here, I get minus 4 times 10 to the sixth times 375 micro, plus J2000 times 0.25 plus 3K, and then I've got again J2000, 1.5 milli, and then 1. Multiplying this through, I get a minus 1.5K. This is a J500, and then 3K. This is just equal to 3, and then plus 1. The milli and the K cancel. Put this into polar form. Convert this with our calculator. Two things in, two out. We'll get a magnitude a little bit bigger than 1.5K. We'll be in the first quadrant, but the angle will be less than 45 degrees because this is shorter than this. So this seems reasonable. Likewise for the denominator, it will be in the first quadrant, a little bigger than 3, an angle bigger than 45 because this is longer than this, so 71.57. This ratio is 500, and 18.43 minus 71.57 is a minus 53.14 degrees. That's the same result we had on page 25 in chapter 8. Likewise, let's evaluate our expression for V out. We had R, which was 3K, divided by S, L, C, R, so 0.25, 5 micro and 3K, and then we had S times L, which is 0.25 and then 3K. We found this before, this is 375 micro, this is again 0.25 and then 3K. Then evaluating that last expression, we'll put in for J squared a minus 4 times 10 to the 6th, and then for S, just J2000. Let's kind of clean this up. This is equal to 1.5K, but negative. This is a J500 and then 3K, and then 3K in the numerator. So we have the same denominator we had before. The numerator is just 3K at angle 0. 3K divided by 1.5811K is 1.89, and 0 minus the angle of the denominator, which would be a negative 18.43, times V sub S of J omega. Now for that V sub S equal 100 at angle 0, I'm just going to multiply this then, 100 times 1.89, so I get 189, and 0 plus this angle is still a minus 18.43. And this is the same result we had in chapter 8 on page 26. 
The third task then was to let V sub S be 100 times the cosine of omega t, where omega was 2,000. Let's take the Laplace transform of this. We just have 100, and then the Laplace transform of the cosine of beta t, back in our table in chapter 9 on page 13, was going to be equal to s over s squared plus beta squared, beta being 2,000. So we have 100s divided by s squared, and then squaring this to be 4 times 10 to the 6th. So we have our transfer function. I'm going to multiply that now by v sub s of s, which is just this expression here. So this is our result in the s domain. Now this is challenging to find the inverse Laplace transform of this, but why don't we use MATLAB to do that for us? Make this a little bit larger so we can see it. So again, we'll have to declare our symbolic variables, which are s and t. And here's our expression. It was 8 times 10 to the 6 times 100s divided by the quantity s squared plus 666.6s .6 plus 8 times 10 to the 6th. And we're multiplying that by s squared plus 4 times 10 to the 6th. So then when we hit enter, it echoes back the expression. You can check for typing errors. And then let's take our inverse Laplace transform. We call this function f. So first term is f. It's a function of s. And we want the result as a function of t. And we'll let that be equal to f of t. So here's our result, and it looks pretty difficult to read. So let's use our pretty command to get this a little more readable. So we've got this term times e to the minus 3,333 over 10 times t times the cosine of 1 tenth square root of this expression, and so on. What does this look like? Well, let's use another command in MATLAB, and that's the do plotting. A command called easy plot. So we're going to plot our function f of t from 0 to 20 milliseconds. In other words, 0.02. So using square brackets to indicate that, and then the rounded brackets around that. So then hitting enter, it then gives us a plot back. This is our transient response leading to steady state. So you can see things bouncing around here and eventually settling down. And the same problem on p-spice. We have something similar in chapter 8, but we have zero initial conditions, so we need to take that into account. As we discussed in ECE 201, p-spice and spice finds their initial conditions by short-circuiting inductors and open-circuiting capacitors and using the value of the sources at time t equals zero. In our case, we have a cosine function, which has an initial value of 100. This is going to result in some initial value for the inductor current and the capacitor voltage. But we could force the initial conditions using the commands we did in ECE 201, and that is to say that IC is equal to zero for L, and likewise for C. So it'll force zero initial conditions. Then we get a little different result than we had in chapter eight, but this matches the curve on the previous page. So we start out with a transient response, eventually reach steady state. Now, although PSPICE and MATLAB gave us the same results, MATLAB also gave us the formula for V out of T. Sometimes it's very useful, sometimes it's pretty complicated. It would depend on what you're trying to extract or what kind of thing you're doing in your own designs. We'll look at things like this as you go through the curriculum. And this is basic circuit analysis in the S domain.